women are still facing inequalities when it comes to work and family. One of the main reasons for this is because of the structures we have placed in society. These structures kind of set the foundation of what is to be expected and the norm of how people should function within work and family relationships. Um, I know, for example, maternity leave is a big one. Um, maternity leave is typically only given to mothers or women who gave birth to the child, which unfortunately this leaves off and pushes to the side fathers, other same-sex partners, um, and they're not allowed or given the time to spend home, spend the time at home with their newborn baby and their significant other. Um, the Family and Medical Leave Act allow workers to take up to 12 work weeks for parental leave. Unfortunately, many women or families can't take the full 12 weeks primarily because these 12 weeks are unpaid. Um, and some families really rely heavily on a steady stream of income from one parent, from both parents, to kind of survive on a day-to-day -day basis. For example, I know my mom, when she had me, she kind of took two weeks off and then she went back to work. She was a single mom raising me and my siblings, so she had to make sure that she had a steady stream of income coming in. Really, if I were to have a family, I would love to get the most out of my maternity leave as possible for straight from maternity leave they kind of turn into stay-at-home moms i know personally for me it just wouldn't work out that way um i wouldn't want to be a stay-at-home mom that's not the life that i envision for myself i would want to find the happy medium of working and also spending time with my kids i also think when we've when we think about our work and family relationships in the future, not only the, the structures that are in place in society kind of <clears throat> help us build the foundation of what we want to see for ourselves, but I think our cultural background and what we've experienced at home also shapes the way we see our work and family relationships playing out. A culture uh, the societal roles for women are they're stereotypically stay-at-home moms. Uh, mm -hmm. They care for the family. Um, they oftentimes don't work. That's the father's job. Um, the mother is kind of like cooks, cleans. Um, it's just like the ter the caregiver of the family. <sighs> That's a hard question. I mean... From my own experience, like typically, like in the experience I have in my own life, um, the women in my life are always in leadership roles. Okay. Like, uh, mothers are always managers and team leaders, and mm -hmm. they're in charge in the house. They wear the pants in the relationships. Um, whereas, like usually, men are more in like um, jobs like auto industry, like mechanics and construction, mm -hmm. unskilled labor, and the women tend to be like higher up, as in like teachers, professors, presidents, things like that. So my mom, um, once we had my brother, quit her job to stay home, take care of my brother and sister at the time. Um, my mom cooks, my dad cleans, uh, but that's because he got, like, ADHD. That's his business. She does laundry. Like, she does the stereotypic, like, mm -hmm. mom stuff. My dad was, like, the only income because he worked. Um, and then, like, my mom drills into my sisters, like, you need to learn how to cook. Um, a big thing is that, so, like, I grew up in a predominantly white area. And apparently, like, my mom, like, serves my dad, like, dinner. And, like... Other families did not do that. And they're like, why are you serving your man food? And she was like, because. So like mm -hmm. that was a weird cultural difference that we noticed. Um, so like my mom drills into my sister. She's like, y'all gotta learn how to cook. Y'all gotta learn how to do all this stuff. Take care of your families. Um, so that was a big thing. 
for me, growing up, we did a lot of the same things, um, like, sibling-wise. The only thing that, like, comes to my mind, like, that we did differently was, like, the boys took out the garbage and the boys worked on the lawn and did the outside stuff. Yeah, girls, yeah, yeah, yeah. That. girls don't have to shovel the driveway because they're gross. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, you're right. So I'm going with the higher rent, so I know I'm not going to make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. so I'm perfectly okay with it. But, like, no, like, I expect, like, my wife to do what she wants and, like, go, like, work and do what she wants. Um, like, my family, I'm sure, would have no problem taking care of my kids. So, like, as far as that goes, like, I would change, to, like, the whole misogynistic, hegemonic masculinity of it. Um, mm -hmm. And, like, I would definitely expect equal partnership. Um, totally. But, like, I feel like I would fall into the tendencies of, like, social norms for my children. Like, I feel like I would be like, all right, my son has to take out the garbage shovel, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, protect daddy's girl. But, like, everyone would be picking up some portion of the weight and sharing it. Um, I'm definitely not the type of person that's like, oh, you have to do this because you're a boy or you're a girl. We should all do it. Um, but if you're not doing it right, get the fuck out of my way so I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that I expected to see, I like Nico touched on it, um, that women do tend to become like stay-at-home moms or even maternity, like parental leave, maternity leave at many jobs only pertain to women. Um, they really don't give like paternity leave out to fathers and stuff. But if you were to have children, would you be open to like, being a stay-at-home dad, would you guys be open to, like, taking paternity leave? <laughs> Randall, you're already oh, thinking. Oh, yes. I would be a stay-at-home dad in a heartbeat. If I didn't have to go to work and do things, oh, yeah. So, like, you'd be okay with, like, your wife being, like, I guess, the like, the... Oh, leader. yeah. <laughs> if she's making 100 k a year, 200 k a year, I'll stay at home. I don't care. <laughs> um, how about you, Nico? I wouldn't mind my wife being the breadwinner, but I, I can't I can't see myself being a stay at home dad. I mm -hmm. like interacting with people too much. Like that's why I'm going into the line profession I am. Yeah. But like I wouldn't mind my wife being the breadwinner and stuff like that. Okay. Um, doing at the time. Because some jobs will be like, no, you're not gonna get that. Yeah. Regardless. Mm -hmm. Um, but I know like for some like I know I had a teacher in high school who him and his wife both took paternity and maternity leave at the same time. And so they were both given it through the school. So it really depends on what you are. If I had that option and like my job would let me, yes. Yeah. Okay, me, you don't have to work. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean it is unpaid. Like most of the time it's unpaid. Well, yeah, listen. <laughs> Money's gonna come from somewhere. I mean that is true, but like if you think about it, like let's say both you and your wife take leave at the same time and it's both unpaid, then like that, that could also work. include other potential factors of like bills being paid. So you guys have a savings account that you could dip into for like that short amount of time or whatever. Um, so I don't know, just I guess things to keep in mind. Uh, let's say for like, let's say like the little, like the little things, the big things. Um, so I don't know, let's say you guys like a little thing, like let's say you guys are going on a date and like, or not even a date, let's say you guys were like, we're going to go get lunch, like would you consult your partner as like, hey, where do you want to go? Or are you just going to be like, look, we're going to go to Olive Garden, I don't want to hear no complaints. Uh, first of all, I'm a Libra, so we all know I'm not making that decision anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good point because as I say, it depends on who they are. Because like, I know a lot of people who cannot make the decision of where to eat. And like I, of course, I'm gonna always ask like, do you want to? Do you know where you want to eat? And if they're like, oh no, I don't know, and I'm like, all right, bam, we're going here. That's easy. Mm -hmm. I, like it's good to ask and like get their opinion still. Because yeah. like, what if they are like one day, like maybe they'll say they're not great at making decisions, but one day they're like, yeah, I really want um, McDonald's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they can have that option to say yeah, McDonald's. Yeah, really conversation to have in a relationship too, because mm -hmm. you. Money is money, and money makes people crazy. Um, so, because some, I know some relationships are like, all right, we put all our money together, and, and mm -hmm. that's our money we share. But then I know some relationships that are like, this is my money, that's your money. You do this bill, I'll do this bill, and we're yeah. good. Don't touch my money. 
My mom told my dad, she's like, what's yours is mine, what's mine is mine. But <laughs> 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 no, I, feel like I would definitely consult. Mm-hmm. Especially that most important conversation to have. Yeah, you have to. It's important. I think all of those things are important to have in relationships. The money conversation, the moving in together conversation. If you're going to propose, you better have that conversation at some point because you don't want to look like a fool when they're like, no. Uh, in residence life, so like we have those tough residents and like it comes down to like sometimes they just blatantly will not respect female authority. Um, so like we have to have like the male have like that dominant presence. Um, and I've seen that on multiple occasions because that's how people are raised. Um, it's like that the dad disciplines them. So like when they get here, like if their resident director is a woman, they're like, ah, whatever, like I don't need to listen to them. That's interesting. Randall? Um, I don't think I think about it, honestly. Mm-hmm. We all know I just kind of am who I am. <laughs> There's no conversation in my mind that's like, oh, I have to act this way because I'm a boy. Yeah. I just kind of do whatever the hell I want. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> um, but like, I have noticed, like when you, like what you just said, like that sometimes people don't respect a mm-hmm. woman's authority. Like I've dealt with that before in like our catch job, where like a tutor told me, like I can't get these people out of my room, and I think it's because I'm a girl. Oh. <laughs> Talk to them, and all it took was me for really open the door. But like, this is my room, and they were like, "All right, we're leaving." Mm-hmm. And then I came back, and she was like, "You know, I think it's because I'm a woman." And I, I didn't really think of it like that when I went in there, because I was just like, "They're not really ready to square up with me right now," because I will throw these hands. <laughs> <laughs> Ever observed personally? Mm-hmm. It's not something I pay attention to. Like, if my higher up is a female or a male, in my experience, it's usually more females are in charge of me. <laughs> That's just how my life is. Mm-hmm. I don't question it, whoever they are. Um, but I know, like, I've heard um, some people from, like, in the Miles meetings and stuff like that um, talk about that. Like, where, like, if a woman is, like, assertive, she'll be called, like, a bitch. Yeah. Or, like, a male is just being, like, he's being assertive and he's being the way he should be. So, like, I've heard people say things like that, but I personally have never thought it or, like, observed someone say that. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't think I do that with it, but, yeah, like, I, I definitely see that. Where it's like, oh, she's being a bitch. It's just, like, she's laying down the rules or whatever. Well, that was it. Thank you guys for being a part of this and for... Yeah, being a part of Chalia's podcast virtual show.